We are so excited to see the research and insights that will come from Health Security Net. But in addition to new tools, learning from crises also requires public accountability. There is no better person to talk about this than Dr. Philip Zillikow. He is a distinguished historian who served as the executive director of the 9-11 Commission, one of the best examples of a process that helps America heal and become stronger after a crisis. Dr. Zelikow's short remarks on the following discussion will examine the possible role of a COVID commission in organizing how we learn from this disaster in the U.S. and around the world. Please welcome Dr. Zelikow. Uh, uh, thanks so much, Chris, and uh, I'm grateful to the Schmidt Futures Forum for opening up this topic. Folks, the pandemic is one of the major mass traumas suffered by humanity during the last hundred years. So uh, a commission, a COVID commission, should help America and the world heal from that. Such mass traumas are really quite rare on this scale. When traumas like this happen to large masses of people together, understandings about such traumas, Pearl Harbor, the assassination of President Kennedy, the outbreak of a world war, Understandings about these traumas always, always become enduring touchstones in politics and culture. Good and bad, fact-based or not, societies will develop narratives about a mass trauma like this, about what they think happened, why they think it happened, and what it means for the future. And those beliefs will become profound influences on governance and society. I mean, in our country, we are already seeing the rise of rival narratives like blame it on China or blame it on Trump or a rich stew of conspiracy theories. The role of national commissions or white papers or other sorts of national inquiries is to help people make sense of what just happened to them. If done well, they can create a reasonably healthy common base of understanding and some sense of what can be done. Different countries have different traditions for how to do this, but it is very hard to do this well. I know these difficulties firsthand. After the bitterly divisive presidential election of 2000 with the arguments about the results in Florida, I directed a privately organized commission headed by former presidents Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford. This commission was successful in turning the page and leading to excellent legislation that proved invaluable this past year. In addition to that private commission, I also directed the government commission, the 9-11 commission that Chris mentioned. It too was successful, but just barely. The partisan makeup of the commission was overcome partly by outstanding co-chairs, by the way, neither of whom were the first choice for their job. A COVID commission or any other such commission can't provide the last word on all the questions raised by a huge crisis like this. What it can realistically do is build a healthy foundation for common understanding and future work. And the challenge is not just another pandemic. There will be other disasters, natural or man-made, that may challenge our communities. That's not all, by the way, that a national COVID commission must do in order to help my country, America, heal. My country has suffered another trauma, the recent political and social trauma surrounding the recent election, so much in the news this past week. There are so many calls for Americans to come together now. A national COVID commission could actually walk that walk. A group of truly outstanding Americans could actually come together and show America back at its best displaying our collective know-how, displaying our practical skills and problem solving from both political parties to help the country turn the page on this pandemic, which is an even greater public and human crisis. A COVID commission will be a very heavy lift in the United States. Uh, the questions cut across borders, they cut across intellectual disciplines. So let me spotlight a few conclusions, at least for the idea of a national COVID commission in the United States. Conclusion one, such a commission 
should ideally be bipartisan and its work should ideally be nonpartisan. In the current political environment, the right kind of bipartisan commission may have to be organized privately, not by the government. So in this case, the Carter Ford model I mentioned might work better than the 9-11 model. I'm actually part of an effort that right now is working on preparing the way for a commission either way. Any commission, regardless of how it's set up, will be an object of suspicion, and it will be impossible to overcome this entirely. What's realistic, though, is to build the widest possible base of support that can last by being visibly nonpartisan, conscientious, and thorough. One trade-off may be that a government commission could wield subpoena power, but a privately organized commission might be less partisan and more flexible and transnational. There will be a temptation to create a partisan commission that can wield subpoena power with majority Democratic membership. That subpoena power, though, might not add all that much to knowledge. People like Donald Trump are not going to be very good fact witnesses. And the cost of doing this on a partisan basis could be very high sacrificing a chance to help America heal and turn this page together. And by the way, in the COVID case, subpoena power is less vital than it was in the 9-11 case, especially if a private commission can work in partnership with the Biden administration and with the Congress. Second conclusion, any commission, whether it's private or public, will only succeed if it has adequate scope and stature and is well connected to a critical mass of support in Congress, the administration, and among state and local officials across both major political parties. By the way, in the work of the privately organized Carter Ford Commission on Election Reform, congressional partnership turned out to be absolutely critical to the commission's eventual success. Third, let me say something about this possible scope of a national COVID commission. Folks who are working on this perceive perhaps eight major research groups looking at the past and the future, one on causes and prevention, another on issues of detection and warning, a third on readiness, the public health infrastructure, a fourth on the issues of containment and mitigation, including lockdowns, a fifth on all the challenges we faced in caring for the sick on the front lines. A sixth one on communities and families at special risk, racial, ethnic, rural, others. Another group on vaccines and therapeutics, both development and the distribution problems we're seeing right now. And a group also on economic adjustment and recovery, which can look uh, beyond America. Inside America, the scope of such a commission must be national, not just federal. It has to work all over the country. It should encompass private and nonprofit challenges too, not just government ones. The supply chain issues, for example, that I know Senator Collins has been working on is a good example of this. Such a commission should learn from experiences around the world, not just in the United States, and it should address the US role in the international response not only to this crisis, but to those that may come, as Dr. Zhao was alluding to earlier. For example, in this case, the work on the origins and course of the disease is obviously transnational, and the examination of what happened in China must be depoliticized to work. I'm also following the work of the World Health Organization's Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response, chaired by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and Helen Clark and which includes my friends David Miliband and Ernesto Zadillo. The 9-11 Commission handled the issue of accountability. It retained its unity and strength by sticking rigorously to fact-finding, more than finger-pointing. Instead, just lay out the record of who chose what, when, and why, and lay it out fully and plainly. In examining what happened and why, it's important to identify the key choices and then reconstruct them in light of what people could reasonably understand at the time. 
That's more lifelike. Hindsight has value, but hindsight can also blind. The path of what happened is so brightly lit that all the, that all the paths that were not taken fall more deeply into shadow. In some cases, questions may not have clear answers. A COVID commission's goal should not be to invent clarity where it does not exist. What it can do is honestly lay out the evidence and offer the best judgment it can on what happened and how that history should shape our efforts to prevent and respond to future pandemics. Thanks.